joined tonight by head coach Laura Sharp and student athletes Mara Nira and Brianna Brady. Coach, if you would, please make an opening statement, and then we'll go to questions. Well, first of all, I just want to say Sacred Heart's a really great basketball team. They are really good defensively. We, we met a team that I think is just as good defensively as we are, and uh, they did a great job of turning us over. But I feel like we, we edged them out just a little bit defensively. I thought they had really, really hard shots, and, and we just did a great job. And we made history, and it, it's such a great feeling, and I'm so proud of our our players and I'm so proud of our community for really rallying around us and and the Blue Hose Nation was deep up there and that means so much to our program and when you create a vision when you take over a program and to start seeing your vision come to life it's the most rewarding feeling and I am forever grateful um, for this moment and this memory that will be etched in us forever. Open up for questions at this time just for the student athletes first and raise your hand. We'll get a microphone to you. Go here in front. Lou. Um, Mara and Bram, just what was going through your mind in those final few seconds? And I saw you guys uh, waving to the fans and just uh, the emotions that you guys were feeling. Mara, you want to take that first? Um, I feel like the game got really close at the end and we handled it pretty well. And also having those fans there. It just hyped us up, and I don't know, I think we finished the game really good, and it feels great to have fans that support us in our program. Brianna? Yeah, I agree with Mara. Um, just being out there and seeing all the people that came from Clinton and around wherever to come and support us, um, seeing all that blue in the stands, like it, it really put a lot of love in our hearts and made us want to play play harder and play better, play put a good product out there on the floor just because people came out, took their time to come watch us. Um, at the end there, when we're, we're waving to them, just showing them like, we appreciate you, we see you, and we, and we want you guys to come back. And, and, and it really means a lot that they came down here today. Other questions? <coughs> Over here to the right. Mario, you, you didn't have anything going offensively until late in the second quarter. Then you kind of went on a little mini run of your own. Can you talk about how it felt to get the finally get the lid off the basket there? Yeah, I don't know. I feel like we were really in the, the floor good. And then we realized that what was working was the screening game, cutting and stuff. That's how I got my points and it kept me going. It wasn't a great shooting day today. So we realized that I just... I realized that, so I tried to get points of the pain and stuff like that. Let's go to Todd here in the middle. Uh, for both players, you guys were making history this season. You knew you could make history today. What were your emotions like coming into this one? Mara, go ahead. Um, I don't know. I've never been here before. We've never been on the March Madness. And winning this game, I'm still in shock. Is, I mean, we are going to play South Carolina next game. And we just made history twice. You know, it was the first time we got all these wins. We just added another one today. And I'm just excited to be here. Brianna? Yeah. Um, before the game, I think that I was fine up until, I think, a couple hours before the game, I started to feel those nerves, those butterflies, like I'm excited, I can't wait to go. I was so anxious to play the game. So going out there, I think that you could kind of see it that we were a little bit like, hesitant or a little bit back on our heels. But then when we got into the flow of the game and found our rhythm, I think that it was really good for us. Um, it, it's crazy to be playing with, you know, the greats um, of our of our women's basketball um, right now, currently. Um, I think that it's crazy that we're out there just doing the same thing that we were doing to get to this point and, and being able to be a part of, of history, you know what I mean? Like going out there and getting another win, like she said, adding to the, that record, and then also winning our first March Madness um, game. That it, puts, it puts so much love in, in my heart. It makes me so happy for, for the program, for the community, for everybody around. Go back to Todd again. Brianna, I know you thought you were done last year, right? Yeah. Uh, tell us how you got a sixth year and what that meant coming back and, and doing it with this team. Yeah, um, so after after the season last year, I put in an appeal to the NCAA um, basically to get my freshman year back. Um, I played at 
Riverside um, for three years, and I just put in the petition. Um, at the time, I guess the rules were a little bit different. So I'm not exactly 100% sure how that happened, but that's what we did. I had a great team behind me, and, and the coaches really put together, you know, like something to, to – be successful and, and get the appeal. Um, I got that appeal, found out, and just put my head down and work. I, I was, oh, I mean, I don't, I don't know. Most people don't know, but um, I had hip surgery, and so I was out kind of in the, in the summer. So when I was finding out going through that process, I was recovering at the same time. And then when it, when it was time to put my head down and work, I mean, we got here and we made history. Lou. Brianna, what was the key in the second half? Uh, you really got going. Uh, they kept uh, feeding you. Did you think it, you would be able to, um, what were they doing that you were able to uh, capitalize on in the second half? Um, I was just trying to stick to my post-ups. I was trying to make sure that I was posting hard and giving my guards a target because I think they were running running through passes. And, and in the beginning, in the first half, I wasn't being as strong as I should have been playing. Um, when I got the ball, I was trying to be aggressive at the rim and, and fake the ball and see uh, if they'll bite on some of those fakes, shot fakes, pass fakes, and then just be aggressive and play strong at the rim. I think that's kind of what got me going. And then also my teammates staying confident in me and telling me to keep going to work. So I think them pushing me and my coaching staff too, telling me like, like I, I, I am who I am and, and I'm, I'm a good basketball player, so stick with it. So I think that that's kind of what put a little bit more motivation and helped me you know, find that rhythm and get, get back in the groove. Any other questions for the student athletes? Seeing none, you guys can go. Congratulations. Thank, Thank you. you. <clears throat> and we'll open up questions for Coach Sharp. We'll go in the back here. Coach Sharp, talking about uh, the international and national flavor of your team, what does this win do for you guys uh, recruiting? You're looking for more uh, outside Clinton uh, players? Most definitely. And what's really cool about the international players is Tilda talks about this all the time. She didn't really understand what, what March Madness was until she came to the States. And I think our domestic players, they grow up going to games as a kid, watching it on TV and dreaming to play in it one day. And so last year before we went, because last year we had so many new players on our team and a lot of them were international I, we actually played before we went to the conference tournament the One Shining Moment video so that they would understand how big of a deal that it was. And we ended up ending our season on a buzzer beater. And then for us to be in this position now and them getting to experience, especially Tilda, she's like a kid in a candy store. I mean, it's it's dreams come true for all of us, including myself. I mean, I've, I've coached for 18 years and um, I've, I've – worked for this moment and to be able to lead a team in, into a win in, in March Madness is, is amazing and so rewarding like I started the press conference with. But I, I think any of this, uh, we're actually getting a few more responses than, than we maybe did this time last year. And, and it, it's, it's great because our media team and NCAA, the, the NCAA has given us great press and there's been a ton of social media. They, we, we just do a great job marketing the women's game and, and that has really changed in the last several years. And people are falling in love with the women's game and I love all of it. I'm here for all of it and I want to do all I can to grow the women's game myself. Can you talk about how the team is a family and how much love you guys have for each other and how close you guys are and how that impacts the game on the court for your team? Well, I think it's twofold. We have love for each other and we have respect because the, when you're on a team and it's like being in a family, it's gritty, it's ugly sometimes, it, it's gross. I mean, I go back to some of our locker room talks after games and and getting our team regrouped and, and you second guess yourself as the head coach, you second guess yourself as, as a player, but we always go back to one-on-one -on -one conversations. I spend a lot of time one-on-one -on -one with our players and I'll ask them questions, you know, how, how can I coach you better? What, what can I do to lead you better? And the kids are honest with me and I'm honest with them. And it's because we have deep seated relationships and we can talk really open and, and free with each other. And I have a great coaching staff who has just brought the family together too. And they have my back and we love each other. And there, there's no coaching staff I'd rather be on this journey with. They're, they're amazing from our coaches to our, um, 
you know, sports information to our athletic trainer. We are a family and it's just bled right into the team. And, and it's not perfect all the time. It's just we have gotten to be playing our best basketball at the right time. I mean, there were some real lows in the season and some injuries and some different things, but they just kept being glued together. And that's why we're here today. Let's go right here in front. Uh, Coach, you were able to hold their leading score, I think, to one point in the first half uh, without really changing what you did defensively to uh, double or anything like that. Can you talk about that performance and the offensive rebounding that really kept them in the game? Yeah, I think Pryor's one of the best players that we've seen all season long. I mean, her shiftiness and her ability to get downhill. I thought we I thought we had her kind of bored in the first half, and she wasn't getting to her go-to move, and we forced her to some other things. And I think it got her a little bit frustrated in the first half. And then I thought in the second half, she really came out and was more aggressive, and she found different areas of the floor. She got on the baseline, and she went in transition. And, um, you know, we did a pretty good job. We, we sent her to the foul line probably a little bit too much, but I'm proud of how we did keep them off the free throw line. They live at the free throw line, and they live with points in the paints. And we studied the analytics, and our kids really bought into the game plan. I don't love how we were on the off, you know, on the defensive glass, especially in the first half. I thought, like you said, that was the one thing that was keeping them in the game was second chance points, and and just an area that we've got to clean up, and we've got to clean it up quick because South Carolina is great on the offensive glass. Let's go here in front to Liv. Coach, what was the celebration like in the locker room? And also, what was your message? They got it to three, I think, late in the uh, fourth quarter. What was your message uh, during that one timeout? The message was just to be poised and keep doing what we're doing and, and keep stringing stops together. I've always found that if you put more emphasis and focus on something that's more controllable like defense, sometimes it'll keep your offense loose without putting pressure on the offensive side of the ball. So we just wanted to get the ball in the right spots, and I thought we did. I mean, I thought we had a lot of great looks that just did not go down, and I think some of that goes to Sacred Heart is so wiry at the rim. They're strong. They're wiry. They do a good job of walling out, up and not fouling, but the locker room celebration, I, you know, as the head coach, I've been trying to do a really good job of soaking it all in, but keeping our team focused and ready to hunt uh, more wins and to not be satisfied. Uh, the, the locker room celebration, celebration was, they were excited. I mean, Naria, she says to me when I'm walking to press, she was like, coach, we just won a game in the March Madness. I cannot absolutely believe it. And, uh, you know, I... I I was excited to be in the first four end game, so we had a chance to get our feet underneath us with us being the first time that our program's been in the tournament. We have nobody that's experienced anything like this, even on our coaching staff. And so uh, it's a memory that we'll make forever. And just being the underdog of the smallest school to play and now the smallest school to ever win a game in the tournament, uh, I love that, and we'll keep kind of playing that card. Go to right there. Go ahead, and then Todd. Yeah, what will it take for you guys to pull what would probably be the biggest upset women's tournament history on uh, Friday? Yeah, it'll take a lot for us. Um, you know, but I, I think that even though South Carolina is undefeated, I, I think you still got to put together a game plan. You still got to create some belief in your locker room and, and divide the game up in many games um, to not look at the whole game as 40 minutes and beating South Carolina. I think we got to just focus on trying to string possessions together, trying to win each three minute game, segment by segment and, and keep it close and stay in striking distance. Uh, you know, we, we've got to keep them off the glass. Obviously they make it really hard to score with their pressure. So we've got to be really smart with the ball and finish through contact. I mean that they are so long and, and athletic um, you know, we struggled to score today. We've got to find a way to make some shots and, and put the ball in the hole a little bit more come Friday. Todd, over the other way. Uh, can you take us through uh, the sixth year for Brianna? I guess it was a long shot. It seems like a long shot. Uh, how Take us through that and then how important uh, the last couple of weeks have been to her. Yeah, well, that's why she filed her appeal was she wanted to get her freshman year back and she just didn't play a lot of minutes. And so that's why they ended up giving her that year back and her appeal. And and the, the Riverside Athletic Director was so supportive and, and awesome in, in assisting us with getting all that paperwork together. But we did not anticipate her getting the year back. Honestly, that's why she had the surgery uh, uh, in the off season, And we maybe would not have elected to do that if we knew that the appeal was going to go through. And so I was actually I mean, we 
were recruiting her position. We had made an offer. We actually had gotten an, um, a verbal commitment on FaceTime the same day that we found out she was getting the, the year back. So the timing in that was a little bit tough. I went from celebrating with my sisters in Putacana to, have to having to make a really tough uh, you know, phone call and conversation with a recruit. But the, the way that she has soaked it all in has been awesome to kind of just sit back and watch the players be so happy and so thankful for the support of the community. And Bree was with me, and, and Bree and Paige Kenseth were really with me in the trenches of the program. And so I think it's really rewarding to both of them to know where we were three years ago to where we're at now. And they stuck with me and kept believing in me. And I think that's ultimately why it's so rewarding for them is the rest of the players c came when we were having winning seasons and, and finishing in fourth place in the conference. But Bree and Paige were with us when it was really, really gritty and really tough. And, and so Brianna is an amazing human too. She's, we tell her sometimes she should be a coach. She's really smart. She's really intelligent. You can see how she, uh, delivers herself in interviews, and, and she deserves all of this, just like the rest of our team. Any other questions for Coach Sharp? All right. Thank you, Coach. Congratulations. See you tomorrow. Thank you. Thank you. Nice to meet you. You too. <clears throat> All right, next up is Sacred Heart. We're joined tonight by head coach Jessica Minetti and student athletes Jada Bonner and Sierra Johnson. Coach, if you would please make an opening statement. Yes, uh, what a game. I think it was a really tough battle for 40 minutes. I think both teams played great. A lot of credit to Presbyterian. They came out really, really ready to start the game and did a really great job with their defensive game plan. I thought it was really different than one we had ever seen and very smart <laughs> considering. So I was really proud of our team. We did a, a tremendous job rallying back from a deficit, never quit, never gave up, stayed together, and you know, just shots weren't falling for us today, but couldn't be more proud of our effort. Open up for questions for just the student athletes at this time. If you would raise your hand, we'll get a microphone to you. Joe. Uh, I'll start for both players here if you want to lead off. Um, I guess take us through from your perspective, what was Presbyterian able to do to kind of slow an offense that was coming to the tournament red hot? 
I think they had a good scout plan. I think they really keyed on Nasir Pryor and the things that she's capable of and the things that she's done a lot for this team. And I think that they kind of sat in the pain and caused us to figure out a different way to put the ball in the basket. But I think that in the second half, we figured it out. We did what we were supposed to do, and we just wish we could have did it in the first half. So Jada, would you like to add to that? Um, yeah, basically the same thing Sierra said. We didn't have a hot start. Um, and yeah, they were they were playing a totally different defense than we've probably seen in the NEC. But yeah, we were able to rally back. It just wasn't enough, unfortunately. Go ahead, Joe. Uh, was there a point, uh, Sierra, um, early in the game when you kind of saw Nasira was kind of struggling to find her shot, where you said, "I need to be a little bit more proactive offensively and kind of use a team effort to fill in a gap." But with, obviously, she's such a talented scorer that maybe it's not often she finds those kind of nights, but. Was there kind of a team effort to kind of wrap your arms around her and kind of pick her up? Yeah, I think for sure. Like, even right after the game, I told her. She was, you know, a little emotional. But I told her, I said, you do a lot for this team. And it was time for somebody else to step up. It was time for us to figure out a way to kind of do it without her. Definitely her presence on the court. But we let her know, like, we got you the whole game. We got you. And even still towards the end, she still figured out a way to put the ball in the basket. Mm -hmm. So I think that it was just a team effort. And we had to stay connected, stay together. I think Coach tells us a lot to stay connected. And that was the main thing. Go ahead, Joe. So, Jada, for you, um, was there a point, uh, late, obviously making that late run in the, in the third, late third, fourth quarter, um, was there a point where the team said, you know, this game has literally could not have gone less our way early on, but you still found your way to work yourself through? What was kind of the message at the team level to kind of keep that confidence going and keep pushing late? Well, um, Coach always says, um, survive the low, ride the high, and we were just trying to survive the low. We, we were able to stay close in the game, and finally we were able to make some shots, we were able to press and be us. And I think that's what kept our spirit a little bit. Uh, I guess I'll go more on the emotional side of things. You know, obviously your season coming to a close tonight. Uh, so Jade, I'll start with you. Kind of what has this season meant uh, to be able to go back to back NCAA tournaments, uh, get that win in the first four last year, being able to make it all the way back with a really great season. What uh, what did this season mean to you? I'll, I'll go with you, and then I'll have, I guess, Sierra, if you want to follow up with that. This season meant everything to me. <clears throat> and um, I am big on the people you're around that makes the season great. I think the wins and going back to back was everything. But being around coach and being around my teammates made it everything in the environment at Sacred Heart. There's none like it. So to be here was just a bonus. I'm, I'm, so thankful for them. And there's a great group coming up again next year. Sierra? Yeah. I think last year we saw what we were capable of, and this year it was just time to try to run through the conference. Like, to be honest, I think everyone knew our transfers or our freshmen, everybody bought in. Everybody had respect for each other. Everybody played together. Everybody wanted it. And I think we made history last year. We wanted to continue to do the same thing. So I, we have a lot um, next year for this group. Any other questions for student athletes? Seeing none, y'all can go. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Good job, guys. You get a stay. Hmm? You get a and we'll open up for questions uh, for Coach Manetti. Joe. Coach, I'll kind of lead off the same way I led off the players. Yeah. You know, coming in so red hot offensively, what was Presbyterian able to do to kind of throw you guys off your game and off the rhythm? You know, I thought their game plan was really great. Nye is such a presence on the floor. She is unstoppable. I mean, even today on, a, on an off night, she has 12 points and a couple, bunch of assists and <laughs> some great stats on her stat line. So I think really trying to shut her down was a great game plan initially. And, and I'll tell you, we took great shots tonight. Like in the first quarter, I'm looking at the stat sheet going, God, we're taking tremendous shots. Like, we took 16 shots in the first quarter, and I think we hit, like, three, <laughs> four. And ju just not being able to see some of these shots go in that normally go in, we couldn't find our rhythm because when we hit shots, we can press. And that's what Jada was talking about initially, where, like, we can really start to find our rhythm, find our footing, get our shooters just feeling good about, about their open shots and, and opening up driving lanes at that point then to, to drive kick, get to that paint, get to the free throw line. So I think Presbyterian keying in on Nye early was really, really big. And, and f keeping us on one side of the floor was a really great game plan, especially when our shooters weren't hitting. And so it, it disrupted us a little bit. Um, 
we were able to make some great half court adjustments, but by that point you're playing a game of catch up and, and that's always tough in an environment like this where you see a sea of blue <laughs> all the time. So I, the resilience was amazing in terms of how the team responded, but that initial game plan I think really, really was effective until we could figure out how to come out of it. And it seemed to kind of reflect in the game stats. Obviously, 15 offensive rebounds gave yeah. you guys yourselves a lot of extra chances. Yeah. Um, what was kind of the messaging from you and your staff to the players to kind of keep pushing, keep pushing, even though those shots aren't falling? Yeah, so at one point, like if, looking at the statue, we shot 23 more shots than our opponent. And so you're thinking to yourself, man, like couldn't really find a way in 23 shots. Um, but in the third quarter, we shut down the open three early. I said, that's it. That's enough. I'm tired of watching us jack threes and then not waste possessions early. So we said, you have to work the ball. And if we can get wide open threes in 10 or less, let's take them. But if you can't, we're not wasting the shot until we find our, our feet again and find our rhythm. And then we started getting to the free throw line. And then we started making some great adjustments against some of their defenders we were trying to key in on. So I think in those moments where you just have to find a way, we did, which was great. Sierra kind of touched on it um, post game, talking to Nasira and kind of picking her up. It's easy to forget she's only a sophomore I with know. all she's already accomplished. But yeah. what was your message maybe to her post game, towards the end of the game? She had such a frustrating start, but still, yeah. I mean, defensively was super active. What was kind of your message as she gets into her junior year coming up right around the corner? You know, I, for her and for the team, we we knew this was going to happen at some point. Right, and for Nye, like she's such a special player. She's a once in a lifetime player here at Sacred Heart. We know that that teams are going to really key in to disrupt her, and like Sierra mentioned, like the team has to rally and say, "Hey, we have to step up for her and support her." And I think she really felt that support tonight, when when Presbyterian went on their runs and she couldn't find a rhythm. Like she felt the team had her back, or at least tried. Right, <laughs> she was trying to have her back. So I think my messaging to her is like, look, you're, you're an unbelievable player. We'll, we'll help you. We'll help you find a way. We'll work in the off season to, to just have you more prepared, I think, mentally to say, hey, we know you put a lot of pressure on yourself, which she does. Like you should have seen her in the locker room. She was devastated. Because I know Nye always feels like she could play better. And the thing is, sometimes you just have to depend on your teammates a little more. And so I think we'll work with her throughout the off season to say, hey, we know you have us. We know you have our back all the time we're going to help you through some struggle and give you some alternate options so that you can feel like you can still play your game, even though another team might have a, a double or a game plan or something different that you've never seen before to disrupt you. You had mentioned yesterday in the, during our media day meeting, um, taking the momentum from last year, learning a lot of lessons, bringing everyone back, uh, fast forwarding to now, what do you hope this team brings into next season to kind of keep building those, those foundations that you're looking for as a coach? I hope the team brings how connected they are. That this team truly, truly invests in each other, and that's a testament to, to how great they are as young women, right? In the holistic sense of the bigger than basketball sense that we talk about at Sacred Heart a lot. Like, they're bigger than just basketball players. So my hope is that they can be culture carryover ambassadors to the next group that we're going to bring in. You know, the transfer portal opened up the other day. We're, <laughs> we're portal shopping. There's going to be new players and, that are going to add value to the team. And it's not just that tangible value on the basketball court. It's that bigger value as a person and as a part of our community. So I think for us, what I hope this will do, this momentum will do, is, is just give us great inspiration and great motivation to continue to be that program that everybody expects us to be. And that doesn't mean we have to be perfect. It just means we always have to give everything we have and continue to try and make our university proud and, and be the best people we can be at the end of the day. Anything else for Coach? Good. All right. Thank you, Coach. Thank you.